Hello everyone. Welcome to the 20 minute more podcast by volume.io. Here we talk with senior thought leaders and practitioners in the space of customer support to understand how customer support is evolving and how is tech enabling them to build delightful support experiences. Hello folks and welcome to volume.io's the 20 minute more podcast. Uh, I'm your host Siddharth and today I have somebody who I've been a big fan by of. Uh, Manisha, welcome to the show. Thank you Siddharth. Very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, folks who don't know about Manisha, uh, I can keep rambling on for uh, 45 minutes about what <laughs> uh, if, if, if I had to con- uh, tell you in one way, she's a super marketer. Uh, and before a marketer, she's she was a great uh, sitar player. Uh, she's performed uh, solo on national TV and for the Indian Prime Minister. She's somebody who loves the cars, uh, evident by the background that she has right now. Uh, and uh, I think... Uh, She's somebody who has, uh, you know, um, been a part of the startup culture for a very long time and has understood most of the nuances that go into building a marketing org and successfully scaling marketing. Uh, Manisha, I can go on and on, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, folks should hear it from you as well. No, nothing much to hear, nothing much to hear. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, my, my career has been quite interesting, right? So uh, a bit of FMCG in India where I think the story goes that uh, during my, my internship days, I was asked to... Uh, I got an internship at Coca-Cola and I was very excited because, you know, Coca-Cola means Salman Khan, Coca-Cola means, you know, all those celebrities. And I thought I will get, uh, I'll get probably, you know, hang out maybe at a movie movie set. But on my two months internship, one month, I was just sitting next to a bhaiya as in a driver in the lorry. And I was delivering uh, Coca-Cola in uh, south, at least southern part of Mumbai, pretty much at the small restaurant. So uh, I think that's where the glamour of marketing was stripped away from me <laughs> and I knew that oh my god this is really hard work but uh, yeah so from FMCG moved to bank to advertising from advertising moved to banking finance insurance from there moved to startup so yeah it's been it's been a phenomenal journey I would say so far. I mean um, and I'm super super excited to have you here uh, so let's get started uh, you know uh, in your journey so far, you've seen the you, you've seen the gamut of uh, operations, right? Uh, and uh, right now, as you lead Caro, uh, what 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 have you seen in the way you know? What's your personal insights in the way the industry has evolved over the last five years, and specifically over the last 18, 20 months after the pandemic has you know uh, struck us? Right. So I would say last five years is probably way too long. Let's just look at the last three years. I think is enough. Uh, What has changed? Well, uh, people are getting very, very tech savvy, mobile savvy, especially in this part of the world. Uh, Southeast Asia, the mobile adoption is just booming, right? And you see markets, especially high population markets like Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, all of them in the tier two cities, there's a huge mobile adoption that's going on. Uh, And I think because of thanks to the pandemic, I would say uh, the uh, the whole experience of buying things online just through their smartphone is something that people are forced to do. So we're seeing like a huge shift in the way, you know, in the past people were used to touching and feeling whatever they want to buy. But now there's just over time, this uh, assurances that are being built of just buying things online. Uh, then we're also seeing now like uh, the whole the cart abandonment that started happening. So the whole, you know, uh, buy now, pay later. I think that's probably the next, next thing that's going to evolve a lot more. Uh, I would I see this probably happening globally because as people move more online, there's always this uh, doubt like whether they really want to buy it, should they buy it, yes or no. So I think there's a lot more uh, innovation that's going to come in that space, uh, and we feel that innovation in this space is going to be a lot more, which also means uh, more people are very inquisitive about the new customer experience. More people also need more customer support, need more help, which essentially means uh, the old days of you know. Uh, taking calls one by one is probably gone. We have to just automate the space. Uh, the faster, the better. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you've picked on the word customer support and you picked on the, you know, the importance of it right now, given, you know, how the consumer youth behavior has changed. Uh, <laughs> I'll just deep dive into it a bit. Uh, at, at your current organization, what is customer support like? And uh, if you could elaborate what the team structure is like, how it is structured, it'll be awesome. Sure. So currently customer support, right, is, uh, uh, so So first of all, Cairo is across four countries, right? So Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia. Now, uh, everywhere the volume of uh, support needed varies, right? So Singapore is a very small country. 
we probably don't need as much customer support, but let's talk about the bigger markets. I think that's where uh, when things things happen at scale, yeah, I guess more interesting. So like, let's say Indonesia, right? The most populous market uh, in this part of the world. Customer support there currently looks like uh, we have two different customer services right now. So one serving what we call the, the C2B business, means people who want to sell their car to us. We have another customer service which handles B2C business, which means people who want to buy a secondhand car from us. And uh, I would say these two have been, uh, so, so whatever inquiries come in, they are handled by them as much as possible, but there's a catch to it, right? So whenever a call comes in, uh, the whole experience is automated. So what that means is we, we actually partnered with uh, a company called Wiz AI to, uh, to really build the automotive uh, module for a voice bot. Uh, essentially what this means is when you want to sell your car, no matter which part of the world you're in, there, there are essentially 10, maximum 10 questions, right? Which are standardized. Okay, uh, which car make model it is? What is the mileage of the car? Uh, you know, like are you in Singapore matters is whether you're the first or the second owner, uh, any uh, outstanding loan that you may have, which was, so we need to settle that paperwork for you. When is the date that you can hand over the car? Just simple things like this, right? Now we saw that there's a huge opportunity in terms of standardizing it because which, whichever part of the world you are, it's, it's the same questions. So we, we partnered with them and we came up with this module where when, you, when, you, when an inquiry comes in online, there's actually an outbound call that is made entirely automated to the customer. Uh, and uh, the bot will actually ask that, hi, uh, uh, we, received, we received your inquiry, you're keen to sell your car. Could you please verify these things with us? And as, as the customer is just answering, there's a guided, very guided, uh, uh, I would say, guided experience that happens. And which also ensures a few things, right? A, the experience is always standardized. It's always the same experience the customer gets, regardless of, uh, uh, you know, the, the time of the day or regardless, of, the bot never gets tired, essentially. So there's this standardization of experience, right? Secondly, uh, it's it's alive 24 seven. So even if uh, calls come late at night, we can always trigger that, hey, if you wish to call right now, just press, you know, uh, press this, whatever, one or two, somebody can call you right away. So, so that, actually give brings the whole customer experience, especially for a category like automotive, which is very uh, very old school, right? Especially used cars. Imagine used car salesman experience versus this where you're talking to a bot. It is, it is like pulls apart. So, so back to your earlier question, right? The, the way we see uh, customer service uh, is built into the organization right now is automated, standardized at scale, and at the same time, not only is it servicing customer inquiries coming in, but post uh, whether transaction happened or not, a post inquiry, there's also NPS that we collect. So the same bot triggers a call to the customer and actually asks, how likely are you to recommend us, you know, from us from a scale of uh, you know one to ten uh, to your family and friends? And all you need to do is press, and that is then recorded back into our CRM system, which is again automated. So it's really I would say end to end at scale, yeah, and automated. Yeah, and uh, you touched upon a part about you know measuring it via NPS, right? Uh, you know, I, and this has been a you know a point of uh, you know contention with a lot of folks, right? Uh, how do you measure effectiveness of customer support, right? So I mean, I would like to understand it uh, from you at Caro. How do you measure it, and what are the metrics you track internally? Right. So so NPS is. is if you ask me, it's probably the most powerful measure, right? Only when you're satisfied, are you likely to recommend the services to, to family and friends? Word of mouth in automotive categories, but in any, in fact, high involvement category, word of mouth is the most important. So I would say NPS is probably step one to measuring that. Apart from that, every uh, transaction, right? So earlier I was telling you there are two types of transactions that happen. Either you sell a car to us or you want to buy a car from us. I'll give you one example. Say sell a car to us. Even within that, we actually measure the experience at different milestones of selling a car. It could mean that when you came down to an inspection for an inspection of your car, right? Uh, how was that experience like? Was, did, the, did the inspector speak to you politely? Was it, uh, uh, you know, were you given enough information about your car? Do you think that uh, then we go into, was the price uh, fair? Or do you think we could have done better? Then we also measure the speed so speed of getting a good uh, quote for your product, for your car, 
Did you get uh, get it quickly the way that we promised outside we would give you maybe in 15 minutes? Was it really that fast? Um, and lastly, just overall in terms of experience, uh, you know, again, how likely are you to recommend? So, so, so we when we implement it in the market, we always implement very simplistically first, which is just on a scale of one to ten. And as the as we have learnings, then we break it down into smaller key milestones because that allows us to figure out where the problem is, right? So if we're able to get the customer to come in, we're able to do inspect and they're happy with inspection, they're happy with the price, then why didn't they transact? That means something fell after we quoted the price. And then it allows you to deep dive into the areas where we need to improve operationally in order to improve uh, the, the, the transaction volume and the conversion rate, yeah. Got it. Uh, and you talked about you know how uh, having a bot which is like uh, not tired 24 7 available at all yeah right? uh, <laughs> yes and, and we talked about it right? uh, and this is from the brand towards the customers but uh, i mean if you could shed some light about you know uh, are customers also changing their mindset uh, when it comes to you know interacting with support are they open to interacting with the you know brand on different channels or on new channels social channels yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think I can't, re I can't recall the research that I read, but but increasingly, uh, customers would rather speak to a bot than to a human, uh, simply because they know that this is an unbiased opinion that they're getting. Okay. And it is unfiltered. Yeah, and we are seeing this behavior more in the younger population. So I would say Gen Z millennials is where this behavior is growing uh, a lot more. And we all know, right, millennial is the next trillion dollar generation. So if you want to capture the millennials and the, the younger generation, then uh, not, I would say not having that uh, voice bot or having automated uh, chat system is really, uh, it's a very hard market to capture otherwise. All right. Uh, and, uh, you know, how has your support team grown or evolved in the last, I mean, we meant, we, we were, we talked about the last one and a half, three years. How has your support team grown, especially with your chat bot? Oh, with the chat bot. So, so interesting, right? Uh, so the voice bot, is, is definitely helping the team uh, grow because they can see exactly operationally, right? Especially where the nuances are. Things that we might slip, uh, we, because there's no way we have eye on every single transaction, right? But if a customer is either very happy, they give feedback, or if they're very unhappy, then also they give feedback. Those ones in the middle, uh, we don't really know that much, but uh, as long as you know the scale doesn't pivot too much, I think we're fine. Uh, but I'll, I'll bring back maybe to, Five years ago, uh, is it three, five, I think about four, four or five years ago when I launched the first uh, chatbot from a life insurer, right? This was during my, my Tokyo Marine days. And that was probably the, for me, the very first experience of what a bot can do. And for me, I found it to be very fascinating. Not only was it a, a multidisciplinary team uh, that I had to lead in order to implement that, uh, but I think what it opened my eyes into is the, the level of automation that can be achieved by something as simple as a, it was just a Facebook Messenger based bot, right, back then. Uh, we used it primarily because on the books, the customers were getting older and older. I think the average age, age of a customer was almost 52, which is not good for a life insurer, right? If your average customer is getting so much older. And we were really struggling to find a way to, to reach out and to acquire younger customers. But Running, you know, your, your normal Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, it's just not, not going to cut it, right? You need to you need to start engagement in a different way and to be able to break through the clutter. So launching that, uh, we used we call the, the chatbot Tommy, right? So it was short for Tokyo Marine Tommy. And uh, we came up with a you know, whole avatar for the bot. It was quite cool. Uh, and because it's a Japanese company, uh, we actually created emojis within within Tommy. So when you're talking and the, and the bot couldn't answer because... It doesn't have all the answers right away, right? It would actually bow down and you know say sorry or wow. it was really quite cute. So we built that forgiveness mod module inside the bot, which kept the engagement going because it is first meant to engage, later meant for business. So you have to be very clear what is the bot going to do. Whereas like in Cairo, the the voice bot is really meant to standardize uh, customer service at scale. So very very different uh, reasons why. Definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, if you don't know what you're going to build it for, you will not be able yeah. to build it properly. Right? I mean, exactly, uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I've been following you for a very long time, right? Uh, and uh, I, I'd like to understand from you, right? Were your thoughts on what used to work in customer support and what is now working in customer support? There are two different things. 
right? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, given my decade in life, in life insurance and banking, I used to think that face-to-face -face, uh, interactions, you know, having those, uh, uh, I mean, in my early years, right, of my career, I still remember printing those uh, customer information for the agents to call and to follow up. I still remember doing that. Uh, I think that worked in the past. It is definitely not going to work now. Uh, those days are pretty much gone. So everybody, I think everybody has to just... Uh, be more creative, be more relevant. Uh, if you want to keep the customers engaged, if not, somebody else is going to come and just snatch the customer away from you. And, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about conversational uh, AI and automation. And uh, I think uh, with Caro, you've taken that leap and you've actually been one of the first movers and, you know, been the digital transformation. Uh, if I could call you the digital transformation pioneer in the region, right? Uh, but for a lot of brands, right? Uh, do you feel there's a need to reimagine the way customer support has evolved? And is the pandemic or was the pandemic the turning point for a lot of brands to switch over to something like a conversational AI platform? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Why not? Because, because you see, uh, not only has the pandemic uh, put a lot of pressure on the, the P&L of the companies right around the world, which forces them to really ask whether uh, how, how, how much of their day-to-day -day functions can be automated as much as possible. Uh, it's really all about it's really about do or die, pretty much. So I would even say not only the conversational or you know the customer support. In fact, everything, whatever we can afford to automate, if you don't know it, learn it and then automate it, uh, because uh, things are moving really, really fast. Even for us, when first the pandemic hit, we saw that our revenues really dropped by like 80, 90 percent, right? Because because car dealerships were asked to shut shut doors and. Uh, we were still part of our business was still relying on the offline experience of customers coming over, kicking the tires, you know, uh, starting on the engine and someone has to be there to, to help them. But we actually broke the entire customer experience in a matter of seven days. And we said, hey, you know, we have to just make it end to end online, end to end digital, which means from the time you start browsing the car to the time you select, you want to view a car, uh, you know, we'll just send you an OTP. The, the key is parked uh, neatly near the car somewhere, and you have like a digital lock, you can get the keys, you can on the engine, you can kick the tires, you can't drive it away because it's not insured. But if you have cleared, if you have made a down payment by looking at the car online, you can drive it for three days. So it's like a test drive three days. Uh, and if you don't like it, you can return it, right? So, so this is something that we came up with just to overcome that buyer's remorse and uh, the fact that people need that extra push to buy things online. So, so yeah, you have to be creative. You got to do crazy things, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, is, this is almost flipping the model of uh, selling cars on its head, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. you're putting the customer in the drive, literally in the driver's seat. <laughs> yes, <doing> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming back to uh, conversational AI and, you know, uh, we, we talked about how it's improved the quality of customer support, right? I mean, it's uh, unbiased. It's it's always there and it's on multiple channels, right? Multilingual also, as well, yeah. Yeah, multilingual as well, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And now increasingly getting multi-dialect as well, right? I mm, mean, yes. in the same language, multi-dialect as well, right? How do you foresee this industry going over the next two, three years? How do I foresee it? I, I foresee it only getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? I mean, uh, I just see, I think it's a matter of time. You can just order a car by, through Siri or through your you know, Google Home and just say, hey, hey, Google, uh, find me the best uh, BMW Z4 for the day, you know, which is the best price. Can you search the web for me and get me the best deal within this price range? I don't know. I think that's how it should be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back to cars, right? <laughs> No, no, no. Give me an excuse and there I am, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think the future is really that. And, and I hope that, uh, you know, given all the data that's been collected, collected about us, uh, uh, I hope, you know, that uh, just by voicing it out, the system is smart enough to, to link, you know, your credit history, your credit score, your, your, your maybe, you know, even behavioral uh, insurance, which means if I'm a safe driver with uh, a good track record, it probably takes all that into play. Hey, Hey, Manisha, you know, say this car costs $100,000. And uh, just because, you know, you've been a safe driver, which I'm not very safe, but just because you've been a safe driver for the past three years, uh, you know, you, you only pay $99,000. I don't know, I'm thinking out loud. But I, I hope that's this level of sophistication that can reach and probably even say, you know, when you browse cars, you typically go for 
why it's all gray is so why don't I, uh, you know, here are the best deals for the, that are out there aggregated from 10 different websites just for you. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> No, so folks who are listening in and who are in the car dealership space, take notes. Uh, <laughs> next, this is your marketing strategy 101. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, one last question before we uh, before before I say bye to you, right? Sure. What that, is the yeah. one tech in customer support that you would want today? Like you would want at your hands so that you can do much better. Like you want today, today. One tech support that I want today, yeah. today. Yeah. I want another me because I have so much work to do. <laughs> but yeah, uh, okay, okay, jokes apart. Let me see. What's one tech support? I think the one tech support I, I wish I could get today, today is really understanding the customer better. Because, you know, a lot of times I know that in marketing, we are always doing experimenting and we are always learning. But there's a way to really tell what would really make a customer buy, say, a car online? What would really convince a customer? What kind of a script or what kind of a information would convince somebody to buy an expensive item like a car or even property online, right? I'm very, very interested, yeah, to, to know about that because, uh, I, I, I mean, we are we're trying, we're testing, we know a little bit, but something that can take away my assumptions and maybe hear all, all the conversations around the world and then just distill it for me. When it comes to car conversation, this is what people are talking about. <laughs> I think that's what I want to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, customer pro rich customer profiling, right? Um, yes. All right. Good. Uh, thank you, Manisha, for being with us today. It was a pleasure to have you. And it was a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, great insights. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening in to our episode today. We'll be back with another really interesting thoughtful and insightful episode shortly. In the meanwhile, you could check out our previous episodes on worldloop.io slash podcasts. If you're looking to build delightful support experiences, do reach out to us on hello at worldloop.io. Till next time, this is Sid from worldloop.io signing off.